Honestly, I don't think anyone should actually switch to Blender, regardless of what people say. Oh, but it is free and it's big and the community is big and everybody is supporting it. I understand, but still, don't think it's really worth it. Hi. My name is Mr. Popo and I welcome to the channel where we talk everything motion graphics. So what can you do in Cinema 4D that Blender cannot do and what can Blender not do that you can do in Cinema 4D? And the answer is that is unfortunately for both of them, they can do pretty much everything. You just have to ask. That's basically the shortest answer. And so what makes them different? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. Cinema 4D is really good when it was growing as a usability software. It was really easy. You just click on this, you'll get this. You click on the cloner, it clones things on top of an object. You want many things, you just use the cloner. If you want to make things disappear and appear, most of the time you would go to Cinema 4D because it has a fall off that you don't need to create any node things compared to Blender. Like you just create this and it just appears and disappears. Or you want things to go disappear in a polygon effect? Poly effects is there. You just click it, drop it there, and it just works. You just have to animate your keyframes. And same things for vertex maps. I'll have to agree. Vertex map in Cinema 4D is the easiest compared to any other software. You just click that, freeze, and then it just grows. And it's just as simple as that. So it was very, very, very simple compared to other software. For example, Blender, where you would actually need to go and find shortcuts and find a way. And the only way for you to do that is to actually go and ask the community. So again, Blender always has this thing where it's not really user friendly, but Cinema 4D is. So what's going on next? Tons and tons of bugs as it is growing. So it makes it really hard to continue on a project without having crash, without running into memory issues. And so that makes Cinema 4D a little bit hard to work with. And especially that you're paying money for it. So it's really good that you're paying money for it. And while paying money for it, it slows you. And when it comes to a high paced environment like game dev, and while working freelancer with studios, it really consumes so much of your time and it's very, very frustrating. And frustration is the biggest problem for any software, for any company. When your customer gets frustrated bit by bit over time, it reaches a point of no return. And so that's where Cinema 4D messes up. So you pay money, but then you're really slowed. And then you have to pay more money for plugins that sometimes are not really worth to be a plugin. It's supposed to be there. And that's the problem that After Effects is also running into. And that's another story for another day. But for now, if you want to do, for example, particles in Cinema 4D, you would need X particles, where in Blender, you don't really need X particles. It's just there, simulations from the ground up. But the thing about Cinema 4D is that you're paying for it, but now you need to pay even more to just do the basic of things. For example, grow particles on, on an object, uh, just uh, on surface. You really need X particles. Let's just face it, it's a monopoly. Also, then this particle is not cheap. It's a very, very expensive or what they offer. And I think that's kind of a letdown when it comes to Cinema 4D because they have their original particle system, but it's not user friendly. And that's what Cinema 4D is about is user friendly. So for example, take an exercise. And uh, if you use Cinema 4D, try right now to populate particles on, a, on an object. I'll, I'll give you five minutes. I'll give you 10. I'll give you 30. I'll give you in an hour. And I'm pretty sure you won't even be able to do that. And even with a tutorial, you would need quite a lot to actually just get it working and a lot of noding and stuff. Whereby in Blender, it's just easy as one, two, three. Is it actually worth to spend all that money for Cinema 4D? I really don't think so, especially for concept art and art direction, which is what I do. And it's fast paced. So having to completely and constantly run into crashes was not really good. And having to buy more and more licenses and every single time I have to ask the company to buy this license and this license and this license for just one thing, I think it's not really worth it. So that is Cinema 4D. And also when it comes to Blender, you have all the tools. Yes, everything is right there and you just need to click but the thing about blender is that it's not user friendly things are hidden somewhere for example for me, it took me quite a while to figure out that there is no dumb light but everything is in an option in the environment and i need to do it in the shader i need to do quite a lot of things to hide it and so that wasn't really user friendly but once you do it once that's it once you ask 
you get. And that's the thing about Blender, is its community. It's really big, it's very stable and robust, but you need to ask all the time. You need internet. The documentation isn't as user-friendly as the Cinema 4D. And I'll have to agree, Cinema 4D's documentation is one of the most user-friendly and well-written documentation after Houdini. Houdini is the best. So Cinema 4D has its pros, which is, again, user-friendly but the cons is that it's not worth how much you're spending for that cost and the struggle that you have to go through and then when it comes to blender it's free it's strong but the problem is you always need to keep on asking you always need to learn from the community and it's not easy to find things for example the easiest one which is the node wrangler if nobody tells you about the node wrangler you might be stuck doing something for a long time while the fix is just one option away but how do you know this option people speak about it so the blender community is strong but it's not user friendly so where am i going with all this i'm not switching to blender and i'm not sticking to cinema 4d in fact i'm keeping them both right now i feel at home with blender i'm keeping it i'm using it for the nitty details and making the style frame look great and finishing up the animation but when it comes to fast iteration and just showing the clients or showing my co-workers how this looks refraction glass gold it's so easy to do it in Cinema 4D, so I'll probably use Cinema 4D for that, but then when it comes to finishing up, I'll go to Blender. And I don't think you should pick a clan. It's still a toolset. You can use them both. And I think in this growing environment, you need to be able to speak different languages and understand different disciplines. And I think that's the beauty of having no monopoly, of having to not choose a clan. Just choose the tool that works best for you. They all can do the same thing, and if you can juggle between them, you'll be in a perfect balance, and that's what I aim for. If it can do it, I'll keep it. I hope this was very insightful to you guys. This was just one man take on why you should not switch to Blender or why you should not switch to any other software, to be honest. If you learn it, keep it. If you want to learn more about Blender and Cinema 4D, I have tons of tutorials that will help you do just that. Please make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. My name is Mr. Popo and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.